Hello and welcome to BusyWorksBeats.com. Smash that like button because we're continuing rocking with FL Studio and discovering new tricks and tips. So if you're new here, I'm Game from BusyWorksBeats.com. We've trained over 700,000 producers and artists around the world. So I need you to subscribe if you're new because we're trying to help millions and millions of people around the world. So today we're going to focus on guitar chords and FL Studio. If you go to PAX, again, I'm going to try and use as many stock sounds as possible. You will get these project files for free. They're going to be in the link below. Just go to the browser, go to PAX, go under instruments, go to guitar. And then where it says Strat A, right click, open that up. And then we'll try the jazz guitar too. So right click, open that up. I think these have the best tones. Strat position B also has a different tone, but it's like these tones. So when I'm trying to keep this easy, so... With guitar, you don't play it like a piano chord. You don't just play the notes all in a row. Like, for example, if we right click, go to piano roll on, on a guitar, you wouldn't just play like if you wanted to play a minor, for example, where's the octave I'm looking for? You wouldn't just play a C E. This would sound fake because it's not how a real guitar sounds a real guitar. And I'm just hypothetically moving notes around. This doesn't mean it's right. Would sound more like it just has a, what's called a different voicing. So the notes are moved around, okay? Now, we had a whole video. Hopefully, I remember to link it below. I'm probably going to forget because I do so many videos. But there's a video uh, we have called How to Make Guitar Melody Sound More Realistic, something like that. Just type in Guitar Melody, Busy Works Beats. It'll pop up if I, don't forget to, if I forget to link it. There's a deeper science to like the notes and how to do voicing and all this type of stuff. But with guitar chords, I'll show you a couple of tricks. So don't worry about stuff sounding real because the whole point of MIDI is to do things that real stuff can't do. So don't get too obsessed about making everything sound real. Okay, so let's try a thing here. Let's make this like pink or something. There we go. Now I feel like these chords are gonna sound flames just off the fact that it's pink. So let's do D, let's do F, A, C, E. Now this is called a minor chord. Now, by default, it just sounds like whatever. But again, keep in mind, when you're playing an actual guitar, every note is not the same exact velocity. So a quick trick you can do is hit Alt R, OK, and then turn off pattern mode and go to levels. And this will make it more random. Just go to levels and mess with your velocity. This creates an, a random value for each note so that it doesn't sound like you just played them all at the same note. Shout out to Chris for showing me that in uh, Nashville. So this is one way to make your guitar sound cooler. Another way is to hit Alt S, but I'm not going to do this yet because I want it to do work on other stuff, but hit Alt S and just turn up your sh strum tool. So now it goes bring, or you could have it go the other way. Let's copy this. Uh, you know what? I can't copy the value, but you can turn the strength knob to the left and it will go the other way. But usually with the guitar, you're, you're going up the notes when you strum because you're especially if it's the first note because you're going down and the, when you go down, you go to higher notes. So anyway, also with guitar, when you have multiple chords selected, hit alternate direction. Now we're going to come back to this because I jumped the gun a little bit. OK, so next step you could do with the guitar is simply move notes around. So I'm hitting control up or control down to move these notes up or down an octave. And if it doesn't sound good, just move it back. That sounds fake. So I'm just moving stuff up or down. That sounds cool. Let's move this E down. That sounds cool. What if I take this F, pull it up? Now it sounds thin. Okay, so it sounds decent. All right, now let's add another chord. Now this chord doesn't look the same, but it is the same. And I'm going to copy this chord just so we don't have to do all this work. Hit shift and we're going to make sure that bottom note is A. So now this is an A minor nine chord. Now these notes sound kind of whack, so let's pull them down an octave. And let's move these other notes. Just move them till it sounds good. I'm hitting control up and down to move the notes. I think that sounds better. Now let's give this like some type of humanized thing. So let's see, this may or may not sound good, but let's highlight these notes, hit Alt A to use the strum tool or the arpeggio tool, excuse me, and change out the time multiplier. I don't know how it figures out like where to put notes, but it all it doesn't sound like a typical arpeggio. So that's why I usually don't use it a lot. 
So for example, this note, I should be going down, up versus up, down. So let's switch this out. Another reason your guitars sound kind of lame is because you got to drag out those notes. Okay. So now it sounds real as compared to this. It sounds like a plastic toy. But then when you drag the notes out so that they overlap, it sounds way realer, more real, way realer and harsher. What did Carnage say? Way more harder. Something like that. Shout out to Carnage, by the way. I'm not hating on him. So these, since we don't have a chord here, we're going to grab those first two notes, hit Alt S again, and then go to alternate direction. So one is strumming up, the other one's strumming down. Okay, that makes your guitar sound more real. So we're halfway there. Now that we have the guitar sounding like something, let's give it more of a... a dun, wait, da, da, da. Now it needs to hit the note D, pause. Let's just hit shift, drag that over until D is the top note. This may or may not sound good. I'm just transposing chords. Yeah, it sounds good, but let's pull this up an octave. Dun, dun, dun. Wait. No, wait. Dun. Dun. Okay, so this top note needs to be E. Now this looks like it's gonna be the wrong chord. I can tell by the sharps. Let's pull this down. Now I forgot what we transposed all the notes so much that I forget what is what. So I'm just gonna pull this down. There we go. Now in FL bass stuff, you can go to the bottom here, go to note pan, and you could actually have stuff pan left and right. I think this is a more interesting way of going about notes because it just sounds better. But in other plugins, this won't work because it's this is not. It has to be an FL uh, image line plugin to do this. This sounds cooler this way, in my opinion. Versus da da da, dead down the middle. It already sounds like a hundred years better. Let's start doing stuff to it. Again, this is a really advanced process. Well, let's go to Patcher. Let's right click. You don't have to do this. This is just to take out some of the mud. Let's go to um, uh, Fruity Stereo Shaper. Double click on it to pull it up. Right click the preset thing. Go to Mixing. Go to A side mid splitter. Okay. It's going to give you the steps so you don't get confused what we're doing. Right click. Go to Outputs. Audio. Send to. If you look in the plugin, the number will, that's the number you want to look for. The two right there. Okay, so the top one that says main output is mono. The bottom one that says send to is stereo. So we can add a plug in here. And again, this is extremely advanced. This is not for beginners at all. Fruity Parametric EQ2. You're going to get the project file, so don't worry about this. So the mono signal is going to an EQ and then out to the main. So now all we're hearing right now is the mono signal. So let's EQ this real quick. EQ some of this like mud out of 200 hertz. The mud somewhere like 150. You don't want to make it sound too thin though. So you want to make it nice small bands. Give it a little high end, something like this, just to tame it. And let's add an EQ, parametric EQ too. And send the send to, which is the stereo. Again, I should probably rename this just in case you get curious and want to open up the plugin. This is the mono EQ, and the bottom one is the stereo EQ. So mono means dead center, stereo means on the sides of your ears. So let's open up stereo and let's EQ this out to take out some of that low end with the high pass filter. That has somewhat of a cleaner signal, and then you could mess with the tones. So it sounds more full, you could boost up before you cut, so it sounds a little bit more full. So 
I feel like it needs a lot more high end. Okay, so that's really advanced. That's a mid side EQ in FL. Let's add a fruity delay three. Turn down your feedback level, turn down your delay time, and turn up time modulation. That's the chorusy effect. If you don't like it, you can pull back the wet level. Now let's add some more like trappy stuff to it. Let's add gross beat. Go to pe uh, presets, go to momentary, and then go to half speed. Now what we're going to do here is pull down this green mix level. So it's like half slow down, half regular. This might be too low for that. So let's pull it up an octave. Now here's a trick I like to do is right click this mix level, create an automation clip. And in your song, just have it move over time. So let's add the melody in. And let's say 16 bars. So we're going to have gross beat come. It's going to be off on at that point and then back off and then back on. Let's go to song mode. Going to move the EQ to the bottom. Let's add some more effects to it like delay. This is actual delay now, so let's pull back the wet level, ping pong mode. I like to add a high pass filter to my delay. Here's one thing I'll do with the, uh, let's group this. I'll make one high octave and then one low octave. So it sounds like two different things. Cause the reason I pulled it up an octave is cause when it goes through gross beat, it lowers its octave. So sometimes it gets too low and it sounds too muddy. And let's try a little bit of fruity blood overdrive, not too much. Again, you're getting the project file, so you don't have to worry about doing all this. Pull your post gain down and turn up your preamp. Just gonna add a little edge. You gotta be careful with the edge though. You don't want it to be too edgy. So let's copy the same exact melody into one and let's paste it on four. So now it's two different sound sources. One is a jazz guitar, one is a Stratocaster. Here's the jazz guitar. Sounds pretty dope in that low octave. It just shows you how you can make stock sound sound really good. So that's how you make guitar chords and FL Studio sound a lot cooler. Smash that like button if you enjoy this. Share with your friends because that's our goal is to help as many producers and artists around the world as I can. And shout out to everybody. Just smash that like button. It helps extend that S for BusyWorks Beats.com. I deeply appreciate you. Subscribe if you're new. Peace.